an adventure park. We're up in the mountains of Costa Rica, right outside San Jose. There's a bike park, there's jumps here, there's canopy tours with zip lines. Before we hit the road, we have some other big plans for today. We're gonna take a look around. Good morning, my love. Hola. How'd you sleep? Like a freaking baby. Oh. Slept so good. Good. Cold weather, it was super quiet out here. I slept like an actual baby. Sleep two hours, wake up and cry. <laughs> Sleep two hours, wake up and cry. I was freezing. Really? It's cold up here. We have a big down blanket that is, we get out when it's like actually really cold, but it's like tucked away in the garage. We didn't get it out last night because I was like, it's not going to get that cold. Might have got that cold. Good boy. Good boy. Si. Ah, nice to meet you. Mucho gusto. So you started this 10 years ago and it's just About, kind of been a, a yeah, adventure? Yeah, and it was nobody, everybody here used to ride like more, it was like more cross country. Yeah. And yeah. I was the only crazy guy that was wearing shorts on a mountain bike. Like, who does that? <laughs> and um, I started just doing the trails for me. Friends started coming over, they liked it, and then, then they started inviting other friends. And next thing I knew, the people that I didn't even know were knocking on my door at 7 so that they could use the trails. So that's when I decided, like, I was like, all right, you know, I gotta figure out a way to make this public. Yeah. yeah. And that's how the bike park started. So you guys heard Arturo. All if right. you guys want to come out here and ride bikes in Costa Rica, it's only 80 bucks to rent a bike and get access. Or if you have your own bike, it's only eight bucks. And this place is literally a mountain bike paradise. It is so cool here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate cool. it, Arturo. No problem. Thanks. You guys have a good ride. Thank you. Obviously, as you can tell, Arturo has this place set up pretty well. There's actually airsoft and paintball fields or courses. I don't even know what they're called since I've never paintballed. Maybe we should do that. That would be super fun. As well as obviously mountain biking. I miss mountain biking so much. We don't have our mountain bikes here in Central America, but uh, maybe we'll have to come back and rent some bikes from Arturo. Funny that Ali has never paintballed before. When I was a senior in high school, I competed on a pro amateur paintball team, so I'm very, very familiar with it, and I anticipate Allie would not enjoy being shot by a paintball gun. <laughs> but, I mean, if she wants to try, more power to her. It would be really cool to ride our bikes here. I really wish that we had them. I've never really ridden in the jungle. I've ridden in the Pacific Northwest, which is kind of close in some aspects, but never in the jungle, and I think this would be super awesome, so. I'm very jealous of Arturo who just gets to ride bikes on his property all day every day. So this place is absolutely amazing. Thanks so much to Arturo for letting us spend the night here. I hope that we put some time in our schedule to come back and enjoy this place a little bit further. But for today, or at least right now, we've got an appointment to make. The place that we're heading to right now, you might have actually seen it on Netflix, on TV. They've had a lot of press coverage. They're doing some incredible work. It's called Territorio de Zaguates, which means the territory of the strays. They actually have 1,300 stray dogs here, and they've given them sanctuary to live out the rest of their lives safely, peacefully, without any threat of the streets, basically. Rather than having a kill shelter or a dog catcher where they go out and round up all the strays, I think they just take all the strays and send them to this sanctuary. It's a no-kill shelter. We're gonna find out more about it when we get there. We are slowly learning that the roads here in Costa Rica don't <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> they are just not suited for our van, they're super skinny, this is one lane, and they're super steep. Subtitle for every video from here on out is going to be Trenton Alley scared on little tiny roads. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> So 
so we waited actually at the gate for a while for someone to come open the gate and in the meantime while I was waiting up at the gate another car came up they actually don't have an appointment the car that just arrived is actually an unexpected health inspection from the Ministry of Health so not sure how that's going to impact our plans for the day if they're going to need to attend to these visitors but it looks like we're following the Ministry of Health car up to the office right now I'm just happy we made it in the front gate yeah and the van barely made it up the hill but at least we made it up the hill and now the road seems to be a little bit more well maintained and we've got a little bit better traction it's exciting there's dogs freaking everywhere yeah. oh hi hi how are you nice to meet you leah hi you tell hi. me you're scared Abandoned dogs from their families, from raids, from the police, wow, in yeah. a, you know, terrible shape. So you have a little bit of everything here. Here, they basically have humans as pack leaders. So there's 12 different pack leaders, and each pack leader carries with himself probably, you know, 50 to 100 dogs. So you can see all these dogs that are behind us right now belong to Jose, the gentleman right here that's taking us on this tour. There's 12 other people like Jose that have their own pack. There's some over here in the distance that you probably can't see very well, but some of the dogs went over there, started barking and growling, and the pack leader moved that way. His whole pack went with him. This is how they separate large groups of dogs and keep any of the dogs that are known for starting fights away from each other. It's really cool the way that they've learned to navigate holding 1,300 dogs on this property. Even though the property is like over 100 acres and the dogs are free to roam wherever they want, it's still pretty much a liability to have all these dogs because if one dog gets into a fight with another dog, it's like wildfire. All the dogs kind of start fighting. So they've kept it under control really well. I just can't imagine what it's like when you've got to feed this many dogs. A new guy comes and starts working here and after like one or two months, they'll have their own pack of dogs with them. Yeah. And that they don't choose the dogs, the dogs choose them, but they just kind of create their own tribe, their own little pack, and it works out perfectly. Yeah. Uh, what's it like when they feed them? Oh, it's, it, it gets crazy. You have to be 100% in it and checking the dogs. It's a lot of growling. So you feed all the dogs. You put some sacks first. So the biggest one and the strongest ones eat first. Mm -hmm. Then comes like the middle ones and then the most submissive ones and little ones eat, eat later. Yeah. We do tend to keep the, the food for a while. And when you see there's food and no dogs eating, then you can pick up. So you make sure eat. everybody yeah. gets enough food. Everyone eats. And if you see a dog that is sick or really old or a little puppy, they go and feed them apart. We spent a few hours walking the grounds with Marcella. She's been working closely with the owners here for nine years and has 10 dogs of her own at home. She tells us about the dog's ability to roam free, how they work hard to keep the grounds clean and well-maintained. Over the past 10 years, it's been a struggle to keep going. Neighbors try to steal their water and file complaints about them. The government continues to impose arbitrary rules and surprise them with inspections. And the stray dog population in Costa Rica continues to climb. But they persevere. As we walk, a sea of wagging tails follows us. The effects of the sanctuary are obvious. These dogs are happy. Here, they know love. The people that live next door actually run the water supply for the city. So obviously, they sell the water to the city, and it's in their best interest to get more sources of water. So the Territorio de Zaguates has multiple freshwater springs. These neighbors want to get their hands on these freshwater springs, so they're trying to sabotage 
the Territorio de Zaguates by saying that they're contaminating the water, that they're destroying the land, when they've had people come out and test the water and test the land, and it's just not true. When this started like 10 or 12 years ago, the owners actually paid for everything themselves out of their own pockets. They only had 100 dogs, then they had 500 dogs, more and more dogs keep ending up here, and it's hard for them to support everybody, just themselves. So now they try to work with local communities, with local companies, try to get donations. These dogs eat $800 worth of dog food in one day. At night, where does everybody sleep? Well, you can see down there that we have a bunch of ceilings and a bunch of places where they can hang out. Yeah. Uh, they usually sleep wherever they want. Uh, when it rains, you see the ceilings without any dogs underneath, and maybe you see a dog in the middle of the grass, like standing like this, <laughs> the rain falling. It's really sad to see. And it's like, why are, are you there when you have a ceiling right next to you? They're weird childs. <laughs> And usually if the guys are working and they are getting wet, you're going to see the dogs standing right next to them. Yeah. yeah, so dogs just follow the people and the pack leaders wherever they go. Yeah. And you were saying that when they're trying to do construction and digging, you try to take the dogs away because if they're like shoveling big piles of dirt, the dogs will just run over and <laughs> dig the piles of dirt. <laughs> they're child. They're child. If you find a dog on the street, take a picture of the dog, take the dog to a vet, take her home, uh, two, three days, send me a good picture, I can post it on Facebook and mm -hmm. then you can find a home for the dog mm -hmm. because it's really hard for me. If I could take every dog you from would. people that call us, it's, it could be like 50 yeah. dogs, 100 dogs a day wow. and it's not possible. So the goal is to find stray dogs and place them into homes that will take care of them, that will love them, yeah. that will keep them healthy. Because you're doing as much as you can here, but yeah. like you said, there's 1,300 dogs. You yeah. can't take every single dog. Yeah, one person can take 100 dogs, but you can take <coughs> one dog. Thank you. Sad as it is to say, I feel like Costa Rica is far ahead of the states in this aspect in the states obviously we have no kill shelters but a lot of shelters are kill shelters and a lot of the no kill shelters end up killing dogs too and then getting in trouble for it so something to look into if you guys want to help support a dog or if you guys just want to adopt a dog this might be a place to look whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Heart. They were twisted and tangled in a telephone line Way past bed, I'm up at night and weary eyed Unwound and I'm sound asleep Butterflies wake with me in the morning Oh how long has it been since they've been around Thank you to everyone at the Territorio de Zaguates for letting us come and take a tour of the facility there. What an inspiring, eye-opening day it has been. That was incredible. In the States, any sanctuary like that will generally have every dog in a cage, where here, not only do they have over a thousand dogs, they have over 1,300 dogs. They let most of them roam free. The only ones that they keep in cages are ones that are too young, too old, or they need to have medication administered to them daily, so they need to know where those dogs are at. All those dogs, if they were in the States, would probably be euthanized, or at least a huge percentage of them would. So the fact that they all get to run free and have a better life than most dogs get to have all over the world, just living on this property, it that's a special place in my heart. I love that place. So we just wanted to say a really big thanks to the Territorio de Zaguates. One thing that we have to tell you guys is that they are not open to the public currently. We yeah. had to make special arrangements in order to get into the facility and film. They asked us to please tell everyone to make sure that you know they are not open to the public at this time. But they're always open to donations and support online. We'll leave all their information below. If you're interested in helping them out, please check out the links in the description. <sighs> we haven't eaten anything today. All we've had is coffee. So I think Allie's getting a little bit hangry. She's not wearing it on the outside, so you guys can't tell right now. She's hangry. So we're gonna jump in the back. We're gonna make some bruschetta. Okay, go. let's go. So we're gonna make some bruschetta, which is Allie's specialty pretty much next to chocolate chip cookies and chicken parm uh, i'm going to cut the bread because our baguette is pretty stale 
and I'm good at cutting them really thin so that they're like little crackers. It makes really good bruschetta. Commence. <laughs> Well, you guys, we hope you had as much fun as we did today going to see Territorio de Zaguates. I would have loved to take some of those dogs home with us, but I know Frank would not have approved. And we all know that Frank is the true captain of this ship, so we gotta abide by his rules. Yeah, he's a good boy. Maybe next time. Frank was really upset because we made him stay in the car, I but... Know. We just didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what was gonna, you know, if there was gonna be fights, if there was gonna be fleas, if, you know, whatever. So, well, and we Frank went in their stayed territory. in the van and yeah, we yeah. wanted to respect that. Also, there was a lot of mud. Yeah. And Frank would have been absolutely filthy. Yeah. So, we don't have to give Frank a bath now. Anyway, if you guys wanna know how to donate to Territorio de Zaguates, go ahead and check out the link in the description. You can follow that. You can donate in any way that you want. Also, there's gonna be a link down there for the adventure park from Arturo that we stayed at last night. Yeah. That place is so awesome. I honestly, I wanna like make more time in our agenda to come back so that we can spend some more time there. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, Hit the like button for us. Like the video, please. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already. We'll and talk to you soon. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Hearts, they're twisted and tangled in a telephone line. Way past bed, I'm up at night and weary eyes. Unwound and I'm sound asleep.